What's up, everybody? Chad here. Ryan here. And we're back at it for another special edition, a Thanksgiving edition of Wednesday Warriors. So happy Thanksgiving to all those who celebrated on this past Thursday. And uh, uh, a happy start to the Christmas season as well. Absolutely. But so Wednesday Warriors is a show where Ryan and I pick up books from our local comic shop, share our thoughts and feelings with you, keeping spoilers to a bare minimum. So without further ado, Ryan, what do we have on tap? I just want to, that leads me in perfectly. We're actually going to do indie books last today. Just yeah. start off with the Marvel DC. That's the meat and potatoes. And then for the dedicated of you, ones of you who are still here, uh, you get to hear our thoughts on the indie books. But today for Marvel, we are covering Hawkeye, Kate Bishop, number one. Iron Man, number 14. Hulk, number one. The Amazing Spider-Man, number 79. Um, the Flash, number 776. Batman Detective Comics, 1045. Batman Reptilian, series finale, book six. Catwoman, 37. And Task Force Z, number two. And then finally, we have Moths, number six, our only indie book. So, up first, guys, the Hawkeye show has aired, and I'm sure many of you have been watching it, and if you haven't watched it, you're curious about it. I think this would be an interesting time, um... Obviously, we know it's like the Moon Knight book that's coming out currently. It's published because of exactly. the show. So we have a new Hawkeye uh, book, specifically Hawkeye Kate Bishop. I'm going to be honest with you. I wasn't going to pick this up. And then they had one Scotty Young variant left in the store, and I'm a sucker for his variants. Uh, I love the kids, and look at Pete's a dog. He's a, he's a homie. So if you guys aren't uh, familiar, um, the Hawkeye show on Netflix is loosely based around Matt Fraction and David Aha's Stellar run on Hawkeye. I highly suggest you check it out. It's about 20 issues. Definitely worth it. Yeah, I think it's 22. It's really not a big commitment. Uh, but so the new show is out, so they have a new book. And how is it? It's all right. Um, it's, it's, if you've watched Wednesday Warriors for a while, I'm going to say something this might not make sense to the new guys. It's like detective comics, all right. Like in the sense of like, it has a coherent, relatively coherent plot. It's not typically egregious in any regard. Um, it's just kind of fine. And that kind of seems, to, for the most part, to be these kind of Disney Plus tie-in comics. They're not tie-ins, but, you know, in relation to the show, they're just kind of all right. Yeah, so it's filler, I'm saying. Yeah, it really is. Um, yeah. I picked it up primarily, like I said, for the variant um, and the art. Uh, these are This is a creative team I've never heard of. It's The writer is Marike Nijkamp, I believe. Um and then the pencilers, Enid Balam. Um, and I will say, Balam's work... Yeah, this is it's this is a really one of the cooler panels. Balam's work, um, it's clearly going for this kind of... And along with the colorist, um, like this kind of poppy sort of thing. And along with the writing. Um, Kate Bishop is a tad insufferable, to be honest. Like, I really liked in Matt... Fra and I'm going to compare this to Matt Fraction's run. In Fraction's run... Kate Bishop is kind of the adult, whereas Clint is kind of the kid, in the sense of, like, Clint's, like, such a fuck that Kate basically has to parent him. Yeah, she's the mature one in that. Exactly. She, yeah. This, it's the complete opposite. Kate is, like, like, I think, I think the person who wrote this didn't read Matt Fraction's run. Yeah, but I also think they got heavily influenced by the executives at Disney who were making the Hawkeye show, which we actually watched today, so right yeah. Read this comic, and we watched both the issues of the New Hawkeye and I, issues, and I, episodes. And I think you, that's really interesting you brought that up, because, um, obviously, in the new Hawkeye show, and with the MCU going forward, Clint is going to take a mentor role to Kate. That only makes sense. It wouldn't make sense the other way around in, our, in the current MCU, um, and clearly they're trying to do the same thing with this. Kate Bishop, in this book, um, not in normal continuity, is kind of just like a ditzy, kind of motivated rich teen, as opposed to this kind of steadfast workhorse, um, and that, and she's like that in the show as well. Um, she can get a bit sufferable, like... Insufferable. Uh, like, I said this, did I say? You said sufferable. Uh, I can suffer through it. Uh, she, she's a bit insufferable in the sense of, like, there, in, in the opening, uh, scene she's fighting hooded robbers, and she's, like, explaining her problems, like, she's naming, like, her boy problems and everything, but... Simultaneously, um, the plot I'm really not too interested in either. Um, but what I will say is there's some relatable, relatable human themes um, throughout this. Kate wanting to go back to her friends in her hometown, but not wanting to revert back into herself that she was in New York. She feels like she's grown as a person in L.A., and she doesn't want to revert to 
past Kate Bishop in New York. She feels like she's a better person now. And as someone who's, you know, away at college, that really resonated with me. Um, and there's also a, a kind of a strange sister plot going on. And typically those are really tired, but we get flashbacks to kind of develop it. Um, but overall, <coughs> excuse me, <laughs> am I going to be continuing with this series? I don't know. It's kind of, it's, I think it's in the same vein as Detective Comics. If it's a light week, I'll pick up the issue. But it's not something I'm subscribing to on Pullbox. It's not the successor to the Matt Fraction run. But if, and I'll admit, I'm not a huge Kate Bishop fan. Um, so, for fans of the character, you might enjoy it. It's more content. Um, yeah, it, yeah, and if you guys did enjoy the Hawkeye show, would you say this is a good... Definitely, because my... I'm actually, I, when I say I'm not a Kate Bishop fan, I really enjoy the character. Uh, she's probably my favorite character in that Fraction run. Um, but this is not her. Okay. She's almost un unrecognizable, but it is It is exactly, it's like they picked Haley Seinfeld from the television show, dropped her into this comic book, and this is exactly who it is. So if you were a fan of the show, um, do, you, do we want to give our thoughts on the first two episodes very, very briefly, like one sentence? I was expecting more from the show, to be honest with you. Um, it seems a little bit too vanilla, too safe. I, I, can, I, I, I think you summed it up perfectly. I expected it to be kind of this big, big screen version of Fraction and Oz run, and it was not. And maybe that's my expectations, but as someone who's read the comic it's based on, Supremely disappointing. I have to agree. There's always much substance there, but anyway. Yeah, but, but that's our thoughts on Hawkeye. But um, yeah. If you were if you were a big fan of the show, which you know, more credit to you. Uh, I think this is a definite pickup. Would you give it a ten? Um, I'd give it about a seven and a half, which <clears> is about <throat> average on our thing. I I wasn't offended um by some silly mistake, but I wasn't really thrilled. Uh, kind of like a solid a solid pickup for anyone looking for more Hawkeye. So, basically, pick it up if you like the show, and uh, if, if, you're, if yeah. Ryan's kind of feeling it next next time, he'll, he'll kind of... I'll probably kind of pick see. up the next issue to see where it goes. Up next, we have um, Christopher Cantwell's Iron Man number 14, oh my. With art by the amazing Cafu. Um, this is subtitled, Behold the Birth of Cosmic Iron Man. So, give him, give him a little backstory to your Iron Man kind of saga. So... My own personal Iron Man? Or this? Wait, wait, okay. no, you're, you're, no, 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 you're, you're personal um, with this series. I jumped on Iron Man in the like in the middle of Cantwell's run, and I've been loving it so far. Strongly recommending it. And this kind of this is the first new arc because like basically there was one story that was ongoing um, or that I just jumped into when um, I started reading Iron Man, and now that story is over and this is moving forwardly. And honestly, the way Cantwell has transitioned from ending an arc into starting a new one is fantastic. It flows like a very stellar piece of, of, of work. Like, it, it it ties together their, their own distinct stories, but it's not like, oh, that, that happened, or maybe you'll get a passing reference. It's, no, these events happened, they're important, but this is a new arc, and therefore a great place for new readers to jump on. Now, Brian's brother tried to read this, and he was just like, it was too weird. I couldn't get through it. But basically, Iron Man has come in contact with the power cosmic, which is omnipresent. Oh, wow. yeah. And it's what Iron Man is going to do with that power, what he intends to do with that power. And there's a lot of factors at work here. Um, we, like What I love about Cantwell is he brought Iron Man back to who Iron Man, like the core of what, of what made Iron Man interesting, he brought back Iron Man's drug addiction. Um, I feel like that problem, I mean, Iron Man, he was wearing the suit, uh, the his iron suit, he was heavily, heavily um, doped up on morphine, and now he is a god, basically. Yeah. Or becoming in contact with the makings of a god. And, uh, yeah, this is a great place for people, for people to jump on. Long-term fans of the character are gonna... This is a great direction, and I am actually... I was blown out of the water by this. Real, and with expectations so high to even be blown out of the water then is... Oh, yeah, it was... I mean... I gotta show you one panel. I showed Ryan, and he was just like, "This is yeah." It, it was truly. It's, it's I mean, right there. It's it's you know, Iron Man fusing with the power <laughs> cosmic. This is. I I I don't know what to say. It's ten out of ten. Really? Yeah. So um, 
Is Iron Man going to be a series you're look, going to look up, uh, look to pick up in the oversized hardcover format, especially the first seven issues that you missed? Um, maybe even the first. Is this a? Is this a? Like, do you feel like it's such an important story? A to double you? collection. Yeah. That's maybe not hard to say. I I know for sure I'm probably going to at least pick up the the trade paperback of Iron Man issue one through six or one through seven or whatever. Um, as for deluxe, I don't know honestly. This if this is really really good. Perhaps. Perhaps. So, but I'm not opposed to it, but I'm keeping my thoughts lo uh, looped up because prices of oversized hardcovers have shot up, and uh, we're in pain about that. Yeah, quick tangent. Uh, actually, one word on that. I I can't handle it. I, like, <laughs> I'm, I, I, I don't have the facilities for yeah, that. Yeah, um, we went to pre-order uh, Chip Zdarsky's Daredevil volume. Four and three, oversized, yeah, three and oversized hardcover. Which, we, if you're a fan, you gotta pre-order. Yeah, it. but they're usually thirty-five or forty dollars. It was forty-five dollars, and, and I sent it to Chad. Chad's like, "What the?" I was, it was, I haven't ordered it yet, but I'm, I'm going to. Yeah. I'm come on. But anyway, um, now let's move into uh, from a ten out of ten to something we have very again with Wednesday Warriors. Chad and I try not to talk about them beforehand, but Hulk number one by Donny Cates and Ryan Otley. This guys, uh, this personally had a lot of pressure on it from me because I, I was just getting into the uh, Immortal Hulk at the, you know, recommendation of you guys. Thank you so much. Um, I'm on issue 20 about of Al Ewing's incredible Immortal Hulk run. And Donny Cates knows how to start a run and still give readers time to catch up. That's what I will say about the transition between from Al Ewing to Donny Cates. But Donny Cates is fantastic. Yeah. He kills it with this book. Or I have to say right off the bat, I was blown out of the water with this as well. And and I, I, I expectations between Chad and I for this book were probably as high as they could be. Donny Cates, uh, if you guys don't know, you know, we basically at this point rave about this series as much as we do Zdarsky's Daredevil. Donny Cates' Venom Run is one of our favorites in all of comics. Yeah, that was wild. Exactly. Wildly good. And um we're Big Invincible fans as well, along with, um, although the writing's not great, his early art on Spider-Man. So Ryan Otley having this duo um, on, on, a, on a new ongoing title. And now, to put it again in perspective, we really weren't collect we weren't privy to Donny Cates' Venom run. So to have a Donny Cates ongoing with this superstar team, we have really not been yeah. able to collect. So expectations for this book between Chad and I were super duper high. And they were still surpassed. Yeah, it blew them out of the water. This, actually, this and Iron Man had a lot of things going on. They're both new, like, new starts, great starts for new readers. They keep the previous events of these characters' history in mind without dragging it too deep or getting it too muddled with uh, continuity. Uh, and they take the character in a new, a wicked new and exciting direction. For I, both of these characters, they're, I, they're so similar. I don't really want to talk about Hulk because it's a must-read, guys. It is a must-read. It's immediately getting the stamp of a must-read. Chad and I are subscribed on Pullbox. Um, but if we want to com comment about it broadly, Donny Cates, yeah, exactly. Look at that. I mean, I want that as a poster. Let's yeah, let's talk about Ryan Otley real quick. A lot of everybody loves Ryan Otley from Invinci Invincible, but then on Spider Man. Um, some people had problems with his Spider-Man artwork, um, which can be understandable. I was personally a big fan, but, you know, to each their own. Uh, but I think Ryan Otley is the perfect artist for this series. His, his sheer mass and his sheer, what he done, did on Invincible. If you've seen Invincible, you know what I'm talking about. The gore, the, the, the massive uh, force behind these characters. And also just the, the on a, you know... Smaller scale, yeah, he does the, the big things incredibly well, but he does the smaller things. The details are all there, too. You, you'll see very intricate details that really help make these characters who they are. They, they reveal a power or a personality trait incredibly well. Uh, so pay attention when you guys read this book, and because like, don't let me down, read this book. Yeah, and uh, Donny Cates, he takes everything you love about his Venom run and moves it to yeah, all. But that's all we got to say yeah, from that. It's phenomenal. I don't, don't want to talk about anything else because. You guys gotta read it. You got it. It's a, it's a must read. T I think ten out of ten. Up next we got. What's your rating for it? Ten out of ten. Ten out of ten. Uh, up next we got the Amazing Spider-Man seventy nine by Cody Ziegler with art by Michael Dowling. <sighs> this is so. This is what I was afraid of here. We have it's so funny. Four <laughs> writers ha having having a 
uh, their creative say on the Amazing Spider-Man title right and now. And it could extend beyond that. Yeah, it's four writers. I, I, At, to I, this I point, can't even name them all. Uh, we started with Zeb Wells, then moved it to Kelly Thompson, then Solid and Ahmed, and now we are on Cody Ziegler. Uh, Ahmed hasn't come on yet. He's, well, he's on Ahmed is, is slated um, after Ziggler. And then you have Jed McKay doing these side hustles and uh, like side books. And this is kind of where it catches up because this is honestly a great place for people to jump on. Oh, yeah. But if you're already reading The Amazing Spider-Man, you're going to be like, why is he repeating this? Like, this is... Like, this... Things have moved very slowly in this book. He was reiterating the, the basic two principles of the last couple books. Like, it was like he... Like, Cody either didn't do his homework or he was afraid to um, really push the story along. Like, it's like Zeb has the story going and he's thrown in there just to get on the book and keep it a basically month, uh, weekly title. And I think it was Kelly Thompson on the last issue. You guys can correct me in the comments. Uh, just so, you know, please do if I'm wrong. But what we said last I last issue, which I believe was three issues into the arc, we said, through two different creators, like, we thought that there'd be creative dissonance. That was our big thing coming into this series. But so far, it's been pretty tight-knit. Yeah. The story has moved along in a natural progression. Between for going from Wells to Thompson, it's fine. And we, we saw... Although they like to focus on different things, and although they're better at different things, the story had a natural progression. But here, um, number one, the highlight is definitely Michael Dowling's art. Um, it's, yeah, Chad, while I'm speaking, if you could find a, a page to highlight that. Um, they're, they're, yeah, it, I mean, it, it really is phenomenal. I wasn't the biggest fan, to be honest. Really? Yeah, I really like, liked it. It does the job, but um, I honestly, I feel like, Patrick Gleason should just be on the book like, oh, permanently. Oh, don't get... Oh, yeah, the, the, this this one was real. Oh, yeah, yeah. That reminded me... It was like a video PS4. game sequence. Yeah, of him taking down these armed cars. But, yeah, um, so we're getting that dis that distance that Ryan mentioned is now present, um, transitioning from Thompson into Ziggler. I'm still going to read the series because Ahmed um, is coming up and he's doing a wonderful job. And also, this book did pick up towards the end of it, so... Unfortunately, the cover spoils what happens at the end of it, which does suck. But yeah, well, there was a big reveal, and of course, obviously, it's Craven the Hunter. But it would have been, yeah, it would have been, it would have been, been so dope if we didn't know he was in it. I just have a real quick question before we move on. Obviously, with the creative problems, looking at the series of the whole, the issue may be a bit of a down. But for me personally, I said this um, to you earlier. I actually kind of enjoyed the issue. Um, but in the, in the grand scheme, it does, it doesn't work in the grand scheme, but solely if I could just judge this issue by itself, I actually really enjoyed it. Yeah. I mean, there's not, it, there's not a lot wrong as an issue and Ryan just said everything that I could possibly say. So that's that, but it's, it's a shame. Um, I, it shows us that Ziggler can write a really good story. He just needs to either he needs to write his story. find his niche within this story or write his own story or just, I don't know, just, I don't know. Just I shift think, the focus. If you're, no, I just think you, they should bring, it, yeah. bring writers on for arcs because if a writer doesn't work, you, you only wasted one arc. But yeah, this two, 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 like you know, two and two and two and two. And I don't, I don't like yeah, it. But I give this like a, uh, so I give it like an eight. I, yeah, I give it an eight because it is overall, it's a decent story, but, but it muddles up the run. Yes. Reading that in collection is going to be a pain. Oh, yeah, because you're going to be like, I just read I this. I just read this. Um, all right, now we're moving on to DC. Uh, do you want me to take it or do you want to take it? Take it. All right, so let's talk about The Flash, um, a series that I have talk, talked about getting better and better and better. And quite frankly, this is the highlight of the book. Um, it's kind of interactive. So uh, I'll spoil the premise. Obviously, you see Dr. Fate. Um and they do this cool thing where it's this little adventure between Wally and Dr. Fate. Um, but Dr. Fate reveals to Wally that he's in a comic book. So Dr. Fate can obviously, you know, look through the fourth wall and he gives that power to Wally, which he obviously was not. Show him the thing. Yeah. So um, Dr. Fate obviously says, says you. Wally's like, what are you talking about? And then he's like, a veil. And Wally's like, whoa, what the heck? Um, and throughout, it's kind of this interactive story. Where, um, so for instance, I'll show you right here. Uh, let me just, let me just get the page up. So you're talking and Wally and Dr. Fate are being overrun by these little creatures. And Dr. Fate says, um, you need to turn the book counterclockwise. He literally says, 
please put your ego aside. It's up to you. Just tip the book counterclockwise. And then you have, you turn the book counterclockwise and then you read it through that and you go kind of do that whole thing. Um, it's not like Scott Snyder's uh, Court of Owls where you're constantly turning it and you're like, what the fuck? And I know it's supposed to be like, what the fuck? But like, it doesn't get kind of annoying. Um, disorienting. It's a disorient, yeah. disorient, disorienting. Oh, Jesus. Um, but it honestly is really, it's really great. Like it, it, it's handled really well. It's Dr. Fate. So it makes sense within the story. It's not like Wally doing it where I'm like, if Wally knows in the comic book, this story should not exist. But it's Dr. Fate. It's really cool. And I think it ties in wonderfully because in the next issue, we are going to be meeting with the Justice League Dark. So it makes sense. We're doing all these kind of weird meta stuff. Um, and it's phenomenal. To be honest, it's not really a Flash story. He doesn't run fast throughout the entire thing. But seeing the chemistry between Dr. Fate and Wally, who are two people I would never imagine in a million years interacting. Well, they did have great chemistry in, in Young Justice. the Young Justice show, which nailed Wally, uh, as did the Justice League cartoon. But this book has been nailing Wally as well. And, it, you know, we Wally's been getting the shaft. He, yeah. These are two, we raised him from history, and then finally brought him back and killed him. And J Jeremy Adams is basically, he's, he announced on social media Flash fans, you're going to be safe as long as I'm writing the book. And that seems yeah. to be paying off, so thank you. Like, seriously, Jeremy. Like, And that just gave me chills, too, because I'm thinking about it. It's like, Wally's just gotten the shaft. He's gotten the shaft. And um, I was really nervous. Like, you guys know, the first arc of The Flash, I was close to dropping it. Um, yeah, I, I tried to read it, actually, and I did drop it. And then, right, and then afterwards, it picked up, and I do plan on picking up where it picked up. Exactly. And and with the Justice League Dark, I know Chad's, you know, really into that stuff. So uh, Yeah, I do love the Justice League Dark. If you're into yeah. the Justice League Dark, pick up the next issue. This is really inconsequential. Um, you know if it's an inco you know it's great if an inconsequential issue still has me raving like this. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's interactive at the end. It has this really cool thing where it's like look back throughout the book and find the the the, the keys and then move on to the ending and then it's revealed it's the Justice League Dark, which is really really cool. Um, and it doesn't feel too hammy, you know, it doesn't feel like this kind of like baiting just to keep you interested. I really enjoy it. And you know, a flash book is good when the flash doesn't even run fast. So, um, yeah, I, Jeremy Adams is just kind of doing this DCAU kind of these weird adventures where he's just throwing Wally into these weird adventures, like with Dr. Fade and with, uh, Heat Wave and with these new characters. And, and it's working out really well. Exactly. Kind of these two arc, one arc stories and I'm, I'm loving it. So yeah, the flash, uh, it's get. Would you give it out of 10? I'd give it a nine and a half. It's getting close to the must read. I wow. think, um, it's, I love it. So yeah, nine and a half out of you ten. Know, I gotta flash. be honest, that convinced me to actually throw that on my, uh, list of books to read because, uh, I'm going to be down a book. That's going to be a oh, uh, wow. Batman Detective Comics number 1045. Boom! Um, the official drop. Guys, tell me about it. A lot of times when we drop books, we don't even tell you guys. We dro I dropped the Mr. Miracle uh, book. Yeah, Source of Freedom. Um, Ryan has dropped several. He Tons. dropped Challenge of the Super Sons. He planned to pick it up and. I'm going to pick it up and trade because I want to support Peter Tomasi. Um, but. but we've dropped other books that we've. You know, Superman. Um, um, the Lake one. The, oh, the, the House the by lake. the Lake. Superman. Yeah, uh, there's, yeah. I, uh, there's but so any, many. Yeah, anyway, um, this one, you guys advanced notice. It's going to be my last issue of Detective Comics because uh, I can't do it anymore. It's <laughs> been, this has been like a 14-issue arc and like t like Mariko Tamaki got somewhere in this book. Uh, she, she It finally seems like there is closure with her whole stupid parasite thing. It's on the, the cover and... She's been doing um, this since she got on the book. Yeah, and now she's finally done with it and I'm done with it too. It, it was... Uh, it took way too long. Um, the stakes for that villain never seem r real because every time it becomes a, like an, like an Avengers level threat, right, it's yeah. wrapped up in that same issue, and this is that same case. Um, I liked what she did overall. I have to say, she got it somewhere that was good, and that's the thing. Like, I know this book is gonna burn me because I'm going to enjoy the next arc, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna enjoy a third of it, and I'm gonna eh a third of it, and I'm gonna not enjoy yeah. another third. So. And then it's going to be another 14 issues, and you're like, well, what did I even progress? Exactly. So, um, there is this one. I mean, Dan Moore's art is fantastic. He's got oh, this yeah. one oh. of, of Nightwing. Oh, and, man, I love Dan and, Moore. like, the Batwing or something, but... That, oh, that's... Yeah, like, it's, Dan... It's, it's such a... It's such a, like, travesty, because Dan Moore is, I think, one of the best artists, artists working. 
Oh yeah, he's phenomenal. And uh, Detective Comics, it's a good book, and it is. Uh, you know, I'm not a fan of Tiny's Batman at all, but it's a decent alternative. <clears throat> I was digging this, but it is just it's just a decent alternative, and I'm done with decent. I want something great, so I give this a seven point five out of uh, ten, um, and that'll be it. Wow, so the drop hammer is down on Detective <laughs> Comics. Finally, I dropped it a little while ago, and uh, Dad has dropped it officially. But let's move on to Batman Reptilian. I feel like this came out super soon after the uh, last one, but we just had a couple double-deckers in a row, and it just kind of, you know, it, uh, it, it, it snuck up on me. But I'm actually going to say something negative for the first time. And this is the series conclusion. Batman Reptilian is done. This is it. The fact that DC charged me $4.99 for this shit is so absurd because the issue length is probably half the length. Um, I, let me get, put this out there. I'm not dissing the series at all. This was phenomenal. Inside. 10 out of 10. Seriously. Like, it was a 10 out of 10 like I've said with the series for a long time. Um, I loved it. One little small problem, Batman, like, indirectly kills someone, and he, like, explicitly says, like, Batman doesn't kill, but he can't stop things from happening, or some shit like that, and I'm like, alright, alright, Garth. Garth is pushing the line. Yeah, I'm like, alright, Garth. Um, but other than that, like, I, yeah, and the fact that the story's so good, I can excuse it. When Zack Snyder does it, I can't excuse it. Well, Zack Snyder's more directly killing. Alright, so, but your big problem is the pricing, then? My big problem was the pricing. This... Felt, at least it felt like it could have been included in the last issue, to be honest. Um, essentially, it's bat big cliffhanger, last end of last issue. Batman's in this grave trouble. And then he gets out of it in the first half, and everything's wrapped up in the second half. And there, it's like five pages each, basically, um, of Batman getting out. I mean, I think it is the same length. It just feels so much shorter because so much less is accomplished. And there, there are these big letters in the back. Yeah, so again, like... It, 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 Lots of also not a lot of panels in each page. Yeah, like it really. There, re there's, there's a couple multi. Also, the art. That's sick. Trump is That's phenomenal. so sick. Um, like it, it, I adore this series, and it's one of my favorite Batman series ever. To be honest with you, um, but this again, it was a high note for the the series to end on, but. Felt largely unnecessary. They could have packaged it into the last issue. But other than that, 10 out of 10. It's Batman Reptilian. I talk about it all the time. You need to pick this book up and trade. Yeah. So even... That was like... Because uh, you opened so negative. I know. You're like, world oh, world. but also 10 out of 10. Um, but yeah, it's Ryan's been loving this series. <sighs> it's a really whacked out story with really whacked out art. Reminiscent of Grant Morrison's... Um, Arkham Asylum. Arkham Asylum. So, if you guys like that, you'll probably like this. If you guys like weird, whacked out If you like stories, Grant Morrison, kind of that weird, kind of ethereal stuff, uh, you're going to love it. Or if you just kind of like... Want a different kind of Batman. Exactly. A slice of the uh, Batman pie. Really quickly, um, not, uh, not to drone on, and I think you just brought it up, I'd like to mention. Talking about burnout, comic book burnout. A lot of people are experiencing it, especially now coming out of quarantine, just reading so much, so much, you know, so many comics. There's so many comics out there. Our answer for comic book burnout, read less crap, read good crap. Yeah, read your standards. Exactly. So. so, again, I say that because this is a refreshing Batman story um, for those who might be feeling burnout. So, yeah, when you gotta drop a book, you drop a book. When you gotta pick up a book, you pick up a book. Exactly. That's, how, that's, that's simple. It's simple as that. So, guys, this is actually the uh, penultimate issue of uh, Ron V's Catwoman. Um, it's still a Fear State tie-in. Oh, God. Um, and Fear State's basically over at this point. It really got wrapped up in the last at Batman issue. From I'm, I'm keeping up with it <laughs> on the uh, preliminary yeah. area, or on the peripheries, but this was pretty good. Honestly, the first real, like, the first half of it was rocky. Like, one page I would love. Then it would switch scenes and I would be like, eh. Yeah, yeah. Then I'd love it again. Then I'd be like, eh. But, I mean, it ended really strong. And overall, I did enjoy reading this book. Um, it, it felt like the art changed in, like, the middle. But I do love that little smirk that we get from Catwoman over there. The silhouette. Um, the art here is by um, Vac Vacueva. Oh, yeah. Um... I'm not sure. I don't think they're the regular on Catwoman. No, no but it's um, Blanco. 
Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. there were three different uh, artists on here. There was uh, Nina Vacueva, Laura Braga, and Geraldo Borges. Um, so that's why, and it, honestly, I, I noticed it, and you don't want to notice it. It was yeah, supposed it's... to be more seamless, but a little strange with that. Um, yeah, uh, it was a roller coaster. Um, I liked a lot of it, didn't like a lot of it, but by the time I got to the end, I was like, this was overall, Ron V knows what he's doing with Catwoman. It was just a little untidy with uh, the cleanup there, and I wonder if that's because of Fear State, but still have, to, still have to count it against the book there. But I'd give it like an 8, 8.3 out of 10. I, um, honestly, the lower end for Catwoman, but yeah, really. I've been enjoying this, and I'm going to continue it until Ron V is done. Uh, what, he does end pretty soon, correct? Next issue is last, yeah. I was going to say, um, it's really, Ron V, he got to tell one story, and then he was forced to go with Fear State tie-ins. I don't know if that was part of his kind of, maybe he had a Catwoman miniseries, and they made it an ongoing, just to say, like, hey, write some Fear State tie-ins, but, I mean, I don't know, like, it seems like, it seems like half of his time has been Fear State issues, and now he's ending, so... Um, no, he was on before, actually. Um, I think he, he, he had a decent bit, um, in Catwoman issue, like, oh, 15. Oh, so like, before the reset. Yeah, I, I, yeah, he, he did, not a very long time, but, so he's had a, a good time with the character, um, but yeah, I, like, this was working really well with Fear State the entire time, but now it's just, ooh, like. It's like, it's time to move on from Fear State. But, yeah, so it's wrapping up. I am a bittersweet because I, there were, like. The previous run and the previous arc, I should say, was killer. Uh, and this actually wraps up a lot of that previous arc. Um, but yeah, it's. I feel like Fear State did get in the way a little bit. And I feel like that might have been the case with Detective Comics because that got bogged down. Uh, but yeah, so overall, 8.3 out of 10. I'm, I'm going to continue with it and pick yeah. up the new uh, writer and we'll, we'll see, see how it goes. Um, I think Chad and I have a different opinion on this book. Task Force Z, um, and he's probably right. He's going to take a more objective view, absolutely. But uh, we might have a differing view nonetheless. What did you think of it? Honestly, it reminded me a lot of um, an MCU kind of superhero story. Um, the stakes were kind of there, not super there. Um, it's, you know, basically Jason Todd's leading Task Force Z, this or this. Random organizations put them up to the task of running this team of dead villains that were reincarnated with Lazarus resin, and um, it's got a, a very MCU feeling to it. A lot of jokes. The jokes work really well. It's very lighthearted. Yeah. Uh, it's not very serious. It's not groundbreaking, but it is kind of fun. I have to say, I'm having fun with it. I and I think I can agree. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I cannot take an objective view. You put Jason Todd in a comic book, I'm going to goddamn love it, um, which has been proven over and over. I think there are wonderful moments, and I think the MCU comparison is right. It's completely on the nose. But And that's not, and that's not say the MCU is bad. As a matter of fact, they found a incredibly winning formula. They've made billions of dollars. And ex Exactly. Like, in the sense of, when Chad and I go to the, these superhero movies feel like events now, um... We're, we're expecting to go and see The Dark Knight, see Joker every time because of how much weight is put behind these. But oftentimes, it's just kind of this fun movie, low stakes, whatever. Um, and and for movies, I don't know if that works, but for comic books, I think it works great. Um, there's one moment, one Jason moment I really love where he's about to, you know, like, he basically Jason's like this big tough guy and then he like basically does his tough guy stuff and then he's like, oh shit, like people were watching or stuff. Um... I don't know, like, I, I just, I, I don't know, I love this, I love, I love. That is a good, oh shit, people were watching. Yeah, I just, I love them. Um, I will say, to be honest, it has some great moments. Uh, like, I think this one was a really great moment. I have to agree, there is some really cool stuff in here. A very, very uh, video game feeling, um, yeah, this I, one. And I, I'm, I mean, I love, I, you know, not to yeah, the, agree. Ed, Eddie Barrows on art does a great job. Um, I actually think his art is better here than it was in Cheer. To be honest, I think he's learning Red Hood as a character much more as he draws him more and more. Um, I think it, it, compared to Cheer, I like his art a little more. I like Cheer as a story, obviously, way better. But I, I, think, I, I have to agree. I think he is improving. Um, but yeah, uh, I think honestly, all of my complaints with Task Force C is reassessing my preconceived notions. I thought this was going to be this dark. Gritty Jason Todd versus zombies. That's what I thought it was gonna be. 
Um, cause I had no pretext to this coming in. I didn't really read the backups, but I thought there was going to be Jason Todd in his new badass outfit with his electrified crowbars beating zombies to pulp, but it's actually not that it's kind of a fun, lighthearted team of they can't die. And Jason can't die cause he has plot armor. So they're just kind of beating people up. And yeah, I like that. That's basically sums it up perfectly. I give it an 8.5. It's fun, not groundbreaking. And I do hold myself to, like, I, I try to get, I don't know. I, I try to be pretentious about it. Like I hold myself to a high standard. Yeah. But this is a good book. I'm not gonna say. I'm yeah. not gonna say it's not a good book. But it's it's not it's not again. It's not gonna be the best comic you ever read. But it's not gonna be bad either. It's just kind of a fun time. Something that I'll read and have a good time with. Yeah. What, what would you give it? Uh, I give it about an eight point. I eight point six, eight point seven. Oh, we're on the same page. Cool. Sweet. All right. Now let's talk about our indie stuff. Well, just one. This is Michael J. Straczynski and Mike Choi's Moths Number 6, the conclusion to their limited series in a new universe that they're, uh, they've they created. Um, it's okay. Um, <laughs> honestly, when I got to this point, I was I looked at Ryan and I said, I'm kind of done with this whole Moths thing. <laughs> like, this has been like a nice, tranquil, like a Sunday afternoon kind of story. Like, yeah. when you just want to um, feel, like, appreciate life a little more, that's really what the story is just appreciate life love the people around you hold dear the time that you have um honestly i was i like there were parts of it i was like this is so cheesy um the, the whole series there were parts yeah. of it i was like this is so cheesy um like i mean I, I mean the whole premise is she's got six months to live she's, she's gonna die and she like, has like her power is empathy and uh because you know you activate your power and if you uh and it, it's a random power and hers is empathy but you only have six months to live uh, so the main character, Emily, dies at the end of this book, obviously. Um, and you get this cheesy moment of her passing over, but then you get something that is just beautiful, as it says on the end. Wow. So, yeah. That is nice. Um, it was. It had its moments. I did enjoy the ending of it. Um, it, it cheesy as it was. Um, but you're I, just kind of over it. I am over it. I think uh, she should have lived for five months. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Uh, yeah. Uh, overall, I'd give this... Like an 8.3, not like 8 seems a little low, 8.5 seems a little high. Yeah, a exactly. series as a whole, 8.3. I give it an 8. Let's a flat, a flat 8 at the end of the day. Uh, read it if you um, just want to feel a little bit inspired because it does have a great message of um, live your life, live it to its fullest, leave everything on the table, and share your gifts with the world. So, uh, I was going to say, as with the series conclusion, trade do you think it's an everyone it, it must buy everyone should kind of consider it only a very niche thing or don't buy it it's only a very niche thing i would say um i'm not gonna buy the trade i have all six issues in uh regular print and i'm gonna keep it that way i can go back to it if i want to um i feel like this might be good for comic book readers that don't really want um big a big action-packed stories they want emo this is an emotional story her power is empathy yeah. Uh, but a literally emotionally <laughs> driven story. Um, it as much as the emotions are there and its life is beautiful, it is hard to really feel it. For like, Straczynski didn't really get into who Emily is. She's just like a wonderful person, and there is some character development there, but it's just she's just, just a good person. Yeah, like. that's what it comes down to. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. So overall, read it if you uh, feel it's, like. That know. sound that sounds appealing. Essentially, yeah. if you want to read a if you want to read a tranquil story about a good person, yeah. All right, that's uh, it. That's it for the words. Biggest winner from Marvel, Ryan. What would you say? It's gotta be Hulk. I know Iron Man is great, but I mean, like, it's it's gotta be Hulk. It's, it's gotta be Hulk. Yeah, but dude, Ryan, this was so good. Well, but hold I, it up. I gotta hold both of them up. Right. Uh, Hulk and Iron Man, great places for new readers to jump on. Oh yeah. Definitely jump on if you haven't jumped you on have yet. To. You have to read Hulk. I'm holding you to that. Iron Man, you get a pass on because Iron Man is not for everybody. But you should. But if you're a fan of the Avengers, the MCU, um, and you want to get into more content, Iron Man, pick it up. Um, from whatever company is next. What is the next company? DC. DC. I got. I, well, Chad doesn't have either of these, but I got to go with these. A wonderful conclusion for a phenomenal series in Reptilian. Um, and Flash just keeps getting better and better, and I'm really, really loving what Jeremy Adams is doing. Um, and it's now a book I really look forward to every single week. So, yeah, those are my two. Uh, yeah, nothing on my table scored above an eight. 
Um, but Catwoman probably. Catwoman would be, would it would definitely that's it for me. Um, but I mean, I mean Task Force Z. Task Force Z, yeah. But there was something really. There was some of that magic that Ron V. Puts, yeah. Um, he's got a lot of magic, but there was some of it in this. Uh, not as much as I as the other issues. Um, but yeah. Yeah, so that's it. Task Force C was just kind of like this line. Yeah. For fun. So, so but guys, yeah. if you're experiencing, like, it, like I'm not really burnt out. I read a lot of books, but I have time and money to read the books. Um, I, if I had to pick a book I would drop from Marvel, it would be The Amazing Spider-Man. I'm not going to, but, if like, at the rate they're just, I wouldn't drop it, right, because it does come out every week, basically, or bi-weekly. Yeah. Just find whichever writer you like. Like, and just read those. I, I'm not liking Ziggler's. I don't have to read the next issue um, of this series. I should. But just honestly, you can probably... That might be weird. But they do have semi-coherent stories on their own. Like every two issues. And another thing. Kate Bishop. I said this was about a seven. So a middling. Even if this issue... Even if this is like a five-issue miniseries, for instance... If you pick up the first issue, you are not obligated to pick up two, three, four, and five just because you yeah, have it. Yeah, just drop it. And just drop it. And I'm honestly going to go um, after this video uh, and, and just kind of clean up my pull box. See the, sh see the crap I love, the stuff I'm excited for, um, and honestly, if I love it or I'm excited for it, those are the things I should be reading. All that middling stuff. Yeah. Like, Task Force C. I don't see myself reading 30 issues of this. I see myself reading maybe five or seven. Yeah. Calling it a day after, like, like an arc. Maybe going back into it if it gets really good again. Exactly. So, so the, so the point we're trying to make is burnout, catch up on your back issues, read your trades, read stuff you really, really love, of course. But on your weeklies, you're going to, you shouldn't get burnout on trades, all right? That should not. You should only be picking up the trades that you love, really, or, or you know is good. Um, yeah, or you you really want to read it. Exactly. Um, if it's a character you really enjoy. Like, I when I got in the Swamp Thing, uh, I really wanted to read more Swamp Thing, but there's a lot of crap Swamp Thing, so I, you, have, you have to be selective about it. Exactly. But at the end of the day, Red Hood, I read all, all of the new 52, and I didn't get burnt out because I absolutely adore that character. I read it. I was pretty burnt out because I was not enjoying it. Exactly. So you're chasing your own, and you can find a comic book out, you, out there for your own interests. And with that, I suggest, I implore you, Go read. Go read more books. And that leaves us with keep reading, guys. Read, read more good books. Don't give up on comics. Give up on bad books. Exactly. Keep reading. Peace out, guys. Peace out, guys. Happy Thanksgiving.